Hello, my name is David Diley, welcome to The Scarlet View, and today we're going to be taking a look at this, the Paralens dive camera. Before I begin this first part of the review, just in the interest of disclosure, I always use a mounted action camera, usually rear view facing, uh, to get some cutaways of me while I'm doing my filming. Uh, I met Jacob from Paralens at the Birmingham Dive Show in October of last year, and he asked me if I'd like to try out one of his cameras, so of course I said yes, and here we are with this review. Now, he did send two units, one of which I do get to keep. The other one is there to be used to film me using the other Paralens camera, if that makes sense. Anything I say about the camera is genuine, honest opinions from my part, from my experience. Uh, so any pros for the camera will be pros that I found out of my own use and likewise any cons. So this is not gonna be affected in any way by the fact that I have been given one of these cameras to keep. So here we go with the unboxing. Okay, so uh, in the box from Paralens, I received, of course, the two cameras, also the ball mount system, and the third person viewer as well. So uh, the pole where you attach the camera to here, uh, obviously you can hold it out in front of you to get that selfie view. But also if you attach these two floaties, uh, to the side of it and you can then attach it to the back of your BC or your wing uh, so you get a rear view of you while you're diving which is actually really cool I'm looking forward to testing that out um, they also sent over two spare floaties as well but the thing that we're most interested in is the camera itself so we'll test the mount the mountings out when I'm on the shoot in June we'll go into more detail about that but now we're going to look primarily at the camera so here we have it. Uh, I've already taken it uh, out of the sleeve. So when you receive it, you receive it with, with this sleeve on there first. Uh, open the box up and we have a nice carry case. Uh, it's quite solid. Uh, you wouldn't want to put anything on top of it. You wouldn't want to, certainly wouldn't want to sit on it. But if you're carrying it around uh, in a bag, uh, in a Pella case, in a hard case, camera bag, anything like that, this will give ample uh, support and protection for the camera. Also inside the box you have the mask mount which comes with the camera. So you put the, your mask through the two gaps there, attach it on the side of your head and then attach the camera, the parallel lens, to, to this part here if it's going to focus. There we go. Uh, you also in the box have a universal mount, which if you take a look at it, this will look very familiar to anybody who already owns a GoPro. The uh, actual mounting is exactly the same and it does fit on existing GoPro mounts, I believe, which is great because I've got quite a few of those. Uh, inside the box also, you have a quick start guide here, which is handy. You have a pre-dive checklist, which is very handy. So if you're not uh, uh, experienced in using underwater cameras and it's your first time, that is gonna be very handy. Keep that in the box. And we also have the user manual, uh, which obviously goes into more detail about everything. Uh, alongside all of that stuff, we have the obligatory and always welcome stickers love stickers can never get too many stickers so we'll put the box down and then this is what we are most interested in so the camera itself so opening up the carry case we have of course the camera we'll try that again we have of course the camera there is a USB cable so that will be for charging uh, also for uh, updating firmware things like that we have spare o-rings these are very important um, if you don't already know it's essentially these o-rings are the things which are going to stop your camera flooding 
Um, and they also include in there as well some O-ring silicone lubricant. So always advisable if you're using the camera regularly uh, to give the O-rings a good clean with the, uh, with the lubricant gel here. Um, as often as you can really, uh, you can never be uh, too careful with stuff like that. So here we have the camera. Now to charge it, we need to remove this rear cap here, so behind the, uh, the selection ring. So we're gonna take that off. Down there, if you can see, uh, it's here where the uh, where the lead will go, um, just below the USB card slot, just above the screen there. So we're going to put some charge in it, um, get enough charge into it, and then I am going to go and uh, set it up. Okay, so I'll put some charge into the camera, uh, probably about 40%. And what I'm going to do now is just take a look at the uh, the controls, the switches, uh, just to sort of show you what they do and how you actually select and change selections using the selection slider switch, which is there. So we put it on to the standby icon to turn it on. Hold it down. Gives a long vibrate and we're on. So this gives you, it opens up with the battery life, the uh, percentage left in your SD card, whether your Wi-Fi is on or off and whether your depth color correction is on and if it is on, how is it set to either blue water or green water? So you've turned it on. So if you want to go into the settings, you rotate the dial to the settings icon, the little gear. And there you get uh, different menus. And to, to, to uh, move across the options that you have, you just pull down quickly on the switch like that. And then to go in, you hold it down. to go in, just turn the Wi-Fi on, and we just turn the Wi-Fi off. So if we want to set our white balance or the depth color correction, pull down. The menu will change, you've got set white balance, set DCC, or go back to the main menu. So if we want to set the DCC, we hold down on the DCC, and we've got blue, green, or back. We want blue, so we'll pull it down, hold down, set it to DCC blue, move across the menu, and then go back. And then back again. And then back again, and we're in the main menu. So when you have all your settings all done, come out of the settings set section, the icon there on the dial, and then if you want to, if you've set a custom setting, the star so if you're in uh, about to start a dive you don't have to go through the menu to change everything again you can just switch it onto that star and that will load up your custom setting and there we have it really really easy now what I'm gonna do is switch the camera off by holding it down it's very polite it says goodbye and switches off so what we're gonna do now is we're going to go in and update the firmware in real time and see how easy that is to do. Okay, so to update the firmware, uh, so make sure I've got the most recent one in the camera, I've come onto the Paralens website. Uh, so support and latest firmware. Um, the link to download the latest firmware. So we'll do that now. Go back into here. Uh, and then it says it's as simple as downloading it and copying the fir file firmware.bin onto an SD card. Now, the SD card is via a card reader into the PC. It's not actually in the power lens at the moment. Um, so we will check that that's almost done, the firmware. And that's done. Here it is, 
this is the folder for the SD card. So copy that over. And that is on the camera. It's really, really as simple as that. Okay, so I've taken the card out of the card reader into the PC. We have the power lens here. Now we carefully slot it in and make sure you don't get any of the uh, silicon lubricant on the card itself. So the, the card is now in there. And what we need to do according to the instructions is turn the camera on. And it will come on showing the logo. Now we have to uh, wait until the logo turns itself off automatically. That's when it's downloading the firmware. So we're doing this in real time now. So this is how long it is gonna take you. So the logo is still on, the firmware is still downloading. I don't imagine it's gonna take too long. It's been uh, probably about 15 seconds now. So it's just turned off. Now what we have to do uh, is turn the camera back on again, where the logo will show again, and then we wait for it to turn off automatically, and that means that the firmware has been updated and installed. There. Firmware is, firmware is now updated. According to that now, the firmware file won't actually be visible on the SD card if you load it into the computer. Again, so that means it's installed. So we screw the top back on nice and tight. Turn the camera back on again and it should load up as normal. There we go. All updated. So, what do I think? Uh, looking at the pros, first of all, I think the first thing that, that, that springs to mind is, is the build quality. It feels really solid. Um, now, when you have a dive camera, especially an action camera, they get knocked about a bit. Um, and obviously I don't intend to drop it, but there is a likelihood that it might hit the deck of a boat at some point. And this feels like it can take it. It feels like it's not just gonna shatter. It feels reassuringly solid. There's a little bit of weight to it, but obviously that weight's gonna disappear into water, so that's not a problem. Uh, it takes up more space than a GoPro, which is what I've been used to in the past. However, that space is lengthways and not sideways, and the aquadynamic design means that I really don't foresee there being any kind of drag underwater, or it's not gonna feel like distracting like it's weighing you down especially if you have it on the mask mount um, i really like the single switch operation it just makes things really simple it's big you know when you're moving it um, and not only that i think the the vibrations when you make a selection is a brilliant idea the beeps on other action cameras are great topside but underwater you're just not going to hear it especially with a hood with this you will definitely feel it. So you know that you've hit record because let's be honest, we've all thought we've hit record and not hit record at least once in our lives up to now. Um, I do like the twisting switch selection as well. It's clearly labeled. It's very simple to use. When you select the option that you want, it locks in and it doesn't feel like it's gonna slip out. And the menu system is so easy to navigate. It's really easy to set up. Um, I think I really like the fact that it also uses very cheap media, so micro SD cards, especially if you're using 4K, you can really rack up uh, the spending if you're shooting a lot of 4K and the media is expensive, which for the power lens, it is not. So that's a big plus. And the little screen at the back as well, it's not huge, it's only small, but it is easy to read. Um, and just having an option just to be able to look into the back of it without having to buy extra add-ons uh, is a bonus. In terms of the cons, I think the only thing that I can see right now is I would like a 25 frames per second and a 50 frames per second option. Uh, there is no PAL from what I can tell. I may be wrong. If I am wrong, correct me. Um, but if that is addressable in a future firmware update, I do think that a lot of people will appreciate that very, very much. Um, when I use this, more often than not, 
I will be probably shooting the higher frame rates, which I can conform uh, to a 25 frames per second timeline, but that does mean putting it into Twixter or something like that to slow it down as opposed to just dropping it into the project. Uh, so if that is doable, please let us know in the comments, Paralens. Um, and if you want it, please let us know in the, in the comments as well and I'll pass that on. Um, but the initial impression is very positive. It's very good. Now, I have a commercial underwater shoot coming up for three weeks in June. So I'll really be putting this through its paces. We'll be looking at the different resolutions. We'll be looking at the different frame rates. We'll be looking at that depth color correction, um, seeing how the footage looks as well, seeing what the quality is like, but also seeing how it handles being pushed in post as well. So how strong is the codec in this? And also, would I use this on a broadcast project? So we'll see. So that was probably gonna come around about July. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you've got one of these, let me know down below. Hit subscribe, hit the notification button, and I'll see you again next time.